BMW's M5 is the yardstick against which all serious performance saloons are judged. A car that in 6th F90 generation form gets all-wheel drive for the first time. The company insists that the bespoke M xDrive setup is compatible with its brand values. It's certainly needed to control the prodigious output of this model's refettled 600 horsepower 4.4 litre V8. The trick rear diff gets the power to the tarmac, there's an uprated auto gearbox and a myriad of drive mode settings to make this the most configurable performance car on the planet. Munich it seems has thought of everything. BMW invented the executive super saloon with their M5, and although Audi's RS6 and AMG versions of Mercedes E-Class have offered stiff competition in recent years, for many, this remains the definitive motorsport-bred business blaster. So, time to rate this F90 series sixth generation version. From the outset in 1984, this model line was all about straight six power, normal aspiration and rear wheel drive. But over the years, all these original staples have evolved as BMW seeks to reinterpret what the ultimate super saloon should be. A V8 engine arrived for the E39 third generation version in 1998 and turbocharging was adopted for this current car's fifth generation F10 series predecessor in 2011. Now at last, we've got four wheel drive too, although BMW reassures us that you can turn it off if you want and slide the back around, which is nice. The main reason that all-wheel traction is needed here lies with the news that engine output from the twin-turbo V8 unit that's carried over has now reached 600 horsepower, 40 HP more than before. Or to put it another way, the kind of power an F1 car developed back in the 70s in a leather-lined, four-door, business-minded saloon that will attract very little pavement comment, but which will outperform some McLarens and Ferraris. You can see the appeal. Now that power hike has required the installation of a tougher torque converter auto gearbox. That's just one of the things that you have to control via the exhaustive suite of driving modes that you'll need to master if you're going to get the most from this car. Virtually every dynamic element of this super saloon can be tweaked and personalised to suit your driving style to an even greater degree, BMW says, than is possible with this M5's arch rival, the Mercedes AMG E63. We're here to put all that to the test and enjoy Enjoy a fresh chapter in the history of one of our favourite high performance standard setters. Mercedes AMGs and Audi RS models are all very well, but for many enthusiasts, this is the only badge that matters in this segment, and we'll admit to being among them. Now we've tested every generation of M5 over the last 35 years, but nothing quite like this sixth F90 series incarnation, powered as it is by the most potent engine ever devised by BMW's high performance M division. Now we were told that last time around with the previous F10 series model, but the 560 HP 4.4 litre V8 then on offer didn't have the thunderous volcanic roar of its Mercedes E63 arch rival. This time a revised version of the same engine puts out 40 HP more and it's been completely refettled with a sharper set of twin turbos, a new cooling system and higher injection pressures. Plus there's a revised exhaust, presumably introduced to try to match the explosive bellow of that rival AMG unit. So let's give it a try. Well, it still can't, even when it's here, a snarly set of M Sport tuned tailpipes are added into the mix. But there's enough promise to this BMW's bluster to suggest that on the road, quite an experience might be in store. 
Sometimes what we think we want isn't actually what we want. Now that might not make much sense, but the engineering behind this rejuvenated M5 does. You might think that 600 HP and 750 newton meters of torque channeled to the rear wheels is a recipe for fun in a super saloon. And if your idea of fun is a car that at full chat will be constantly on the edge of throwing you into a ditch on anything other than a billiard table smooth dry racetrack, then that might be true. For most of us though, the fear factor would diminish the pleasure pretty rapidly. Now we've loved the M5s we've driven in the past on racetracks and open flowing dry cars country roads, but on wet, wintry, icy mornings we have sometimes agonised over whether to take the car out at all if uh, something else was available to use. Now because this F90 series model has had to match the uprated output of its uber powerful Mercedes E63 rival, BMW knew it would need the kind of four wheel drive engineering that would settle the mind in scenarios of that sort, but they weren't prepared to surrender this model line's classic rear driven muscle car feel, nor have they. Now that Mercedes delivers very much a 4x4 formula, although it also includes a selectable drift mode that you'll hardly ever use that disconnects the front axle drive when you're on a track. Now the M xDrive four-wheel drive system adopted for this BMW in contrast makes it very much more a two-wheel drive plus two machine. Power is never directed to the front wheels unless conditions are really slippery or you're about to strip the tread off the rear tyres. A four-wheel drive sport setting makes the car even more reticent to involve its front axle in proceedings and for track use there's a selectable two-wheel drive only option uh, which will keep you permanently rear driven if that's what you really want. Ah yes, selectable options, an awful lot of them with this car, but then there always were with an M5. Uh, when we tested the previous generation F10 series model back in 2011, we found that it could be configured into a mind-boggling 243 possible different drive mode combinations. Now this F90 version easily improves on that. Accessing the xDrive settings we just mentioned means disabling the DSC stability control system. Uh, there is an interim MDM, M dynamic mode, which allows a bit more tail out latitude if you don't want to completely turn it off. Um, in addition, there are efficient sport and sport plus settings for engine response and BMW's usual comfort sport and sport plus options for both the chassis, i.e. the suspension and the steering setup. Uh, there are shortcut buttons to the right of the gear stick to manipulate the engine, the suspension and the steering, or you can just do everything through the uh, center dash iDrive screen's M configuration menu. There's more too. Another key change forced on BMW by this sixth generation M5's power hike is a substitution of the previous model's MDCT dual clutch seven speed auto gearbox for an older tech uh, torque converter eight speed M Steptronic auto transmission, which is better able to cope with all that extra torque. Now, like the previous box, this one can either work in normal D auto form, or if you click the stick again to S on the right, you can activate a manual setting, which will allow you to use the steering wheel mounted paddles. Either way, there are three provided settings to alter the speed of each D or S gear shift, which you can access through a button on top of the gear stick here, or again from that end configuration menu. If having explained all of that, we were to tell you that mastery of this car's various drive systems was fairly straightforward, you might find that difficult to believe. Actually though, setting yourself up with this BMW really isn't all that difficult. Uh, go to that iDrive screen menu, save your various favourite modes as either M1 or M2, and then as you drive, activate either one of these serious looking red M1 or M2 buttons on top of the steering wheel to access your preset programmes. Uh, once you've done that, if you want to tweak things a little, say by combining a drift happy rear drive setup with comfort spec suspension and steering, then it's easy to do that via the shortcut buttons. It's not possible to tune the feel of a Mercedes E63 with quite that kind of flexibility. That AMG model setup is far more prescriptive which kind of fits with other aspects of this BMW's character. Whereas that Mercedes presents you with an astonishing portfolio of talents, but requires you to access them on its terms, there's a greater element of delicate adjustability to the way that an M5 works with you in Extremis. So instead of the feeling of trying to master a runaway train, you can more easily, once you're truly familiar with this car, feel an integral part of the dynamic process as a driver. 
This is something that always characterizes fully fledged BMW M series products. And as we suggested earlier, it hasn't been blunted here by the addition of four wheel drive, nor is it diluted by an over assisted steering rack. The M Servotronic setup is fearsome and admirably accurate. All of which is just as well because, as you might expect from the power output equated earlier, this is a very, very fast car indeed. I mean, the briefest brush on the throttle simply hurls this BMW forward with such force that on first acquaintance, your immediate instinct is to ease off just to keep your velocity within reasonable bounds. But then you realize just how much more there is to come and by degrees, if road conditions permit, you get braver and more confident in the way that the horizon scrolls towards you like it's on fast forward. Uh, you'll be one of the figures of course, 62 miles an hour from rest takes 3.4 seconds. You'd need to spend nearly £5,000 more on the S version of that Mercedes E63 to exactly match that. And the top speeds are limited to 155 miles an hour only because the Munich maker wants to be able to charge you more than £2,000 more for the optional M drivers package which raises it to 190 miles an hour. If that's all not quite fast enough then BMW offers an alternative competition version of this model which uh, hikes power to 625 HP and the 60 sprint time fractionally reduces to 3.3 seconds. Either way, you're looking at a set of figures which will leave you only a fraction off the pace of a Ferrari 488 GTB. But of course, a two-ton super saloon is going to change direction with the agility of that Maranello model. Or so you'd think, actually, this M5 does an astonishingly good job of disguising all that bulk. And it's aided hugely by the active M differential carried over from the previous model, which varies torque from side to side of the M-specific five bar rear axle as you throw the car through the corners, making sure that the power is always being transmitted to the wheel that can make best use of it. And it just fires you from bend to bend. It really does make this car feel light on its feet, even if it can't quite disguise its overall weight and bulk. In a supercar, this kind of ultimate capability would continually impose itself on you. But in an M5, you experience it only when you want to. When you don't, this BMW can be as quiet, as easy to drive, and as easy to ride in as a 520D. The Munich engineers may have reworked virtually every aspect of the 5 Series suspension package to make this car more responsive on track, but uh, the ride, when it's set to comfort, is still supple and supportive. Long distance cruising can be effortless, and braking is appropriately forceful, if sometimes rather abrupt, especially with the fearsomely expensive optional carbon ceramic disc that we've got fitted here. All of which leaves us, uh, well, where? Well, you could moan about the engine note, and of course you can moan about the price, but all of that gets forgotten when you start to drive this car as the Munich men intended, ideally on a track. Now, yes, we know that the average M5 owner doesn't ever venture off the Queen's Highway, but the average M5 owner is just missing out. Lack of confidence is no excuse. Get on a circuit or an airfield with an instructor and just enjoy the delicious way that barreling out of corners, you can turn this car with the throttle. Believe us, it's worth smoking through an expensive set of Pirelli P0 rubber for. Here, there are very few of the gadgets that BMW says are needed to make an ordinary 5 Series into a driver's car. So things like rear wheel steering, variable ratio steering, active anti-roll bars, none of that. An M5 doesn't need it. It only needs you and an open road. M5s have always been good at dialing down the aesthetic excess to create a potent yet low key appearance that'll let you get away with using more of that performance more of the time. This one's no different, understated to a T, as most owners will want. Uh, compared to its F10 series predecessor, this F90 sixth generation car appears to have cut out the takeaways and hit the gym a bit harder, with sleeker detailing and a lithe profile that's longer and wider. Couple that with some more overt M styling touches and you're left with a more uh, confident design, although one that could easily be mistaken for your local sales manager's ordinary M Sport trimmed F20D unless you look quite closely. But as we just said, perhaps that's just the point. 
Take the side silhouette. Uh, you really have to know your BMWs to recognize this one's exalted status. The wheel arches are gently teased over M double spoke 20 inch alloys through which you can glimpse the high performance braking system. That's here upgraded with matte gold colored calipers which designate a fearsomely expensive set of M carbon ceramic discs. Uh, in addition, there are M specific mirrors and M5 branded side gills. But that's about it for the model specific changes. Unless you happen to be uh, admiring this car from an upper window, then you'll be able to take in the lovely CFRP carbon fibre reinforced plastic roof. Uh, as usual on a 5 Series, the profile is distinguished by a long bonnet, the short front overhangs and a rear C-pillar characterised by the familiar BMW Hofmeister kink. Things are much more overt here at the front where the bumpers had to be completely redesigned to allow for these huge air openings necessary to cool both the brakes and that big V8 engine. Uh, four distinct crease lines flow down the aluminium bonnet into the usual wide front kidney grille and that's flanked by piercing BMW Icon adaptive LED headlights that feature a selective beam anti-dazzle high beam system which works at a range of up to 500 metres. Now the rear perspective is dominated by this more overt diffuser with twin tailpipes built into each side of the M specific lower apron. Uh, there's a super subtle bootlid spoiler and a shark fin antenna. As usual though, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see, uh, namely an impressive curb weight stat that rather astonishingly sees this fully kitted out all wheel drive F90 car weighing 15 kilos less than its less sophisticated rear driven F10 generation predecessor. Now that's down to the mixed metal cluster architecture unbody structure of the current 5 series, the extra use of aluminium for the front wings and the adoption of that carbon fibre style roof. Now BMW won't reveal how much lighter this car might have been if it had retained a rear driven layout but perhaps one day a stripped out special edition two wheel drive race version will tell us. Uh, time to move inside, and even before you do, signs of thoughtful, futuristic design are constantly close at hand. Pay for this optional display key, and you'll find that even this part of the car has been given a thorough makeover, which incorporates a tiny integrated touchscreen, which allows you to uh, see if you've locked the car, check how much fuel remains, and either pre-warm or pre-cool the cabin before you get in. but what matters is how it feels inside. Now it says a lot about the quality of the seventh generation G30 BMW 5 Series that it's only taken a bit of fairly minor fettling to make this cabin feel entirely appropriate to a car with a six figure price tag and to a supersonic saloon with Ferrari levels of performance. Now the primary contributor to that lies with these M multifunctional sports seats, which grip you tightly, use soft fine grain merino leather and feature an M5 logo beneath the headrest, which BMW has seen fit to illuminate. You also get a red starter button and anthracite coloured Alcantara headlining. And the main controls are nicely finished. Uh, the bespoke red striped stick that you get for the new eight-speed M Steptronic auto gearbox and the thick three-spoke M leather steering wheel with its important two red memory setting buttons that you'll want to program to your preferences at the earliest opportunity. Through it, you view an M-branded set of graphics in the standard digital cockpit instrument binnacle screen. Now, because BMW has wanted to retain more of the look of traditional circular gauges, you can't completely customize the layout of this dial area in the way that would be possible in Mercedes and Audi rivals. But it is still graphically smart, and the red needle readouts have a realistic DTM style feel. Now, we particularly like the way that the dial numbers are highlighted as the uh, needle approaches them and also the manner in which the gauge display areas are configurable in different ways to show a variety of information, such as uh, fuel consumption and sat nav instructions. Mind you, won't be necessary to look at any of this very much if you make full use of the standard head-up display. And now that has a bespoke M view option, and that would be a boon if you were really trying to focus flat out on a track. 
as in any ordinary five, the center of the dash is dominated by a big 10.25 inch colored iDrive screen. Uh, that's the brand's professional multimedia and navigation system. Now you'll quickly bond with the straightforward, intuitive way it works. The monitor's divided into a simple connected drive, uh, media radio, navigation, uh, communication, uh, my vehicle, and notification segments. These days, this is a touchscreen interface and you can also operate it by BMW's gesture control feature, which recognizes up to six hand gestures via a 3D sensor at the base of the control display. So a twirl of your outstretched finger will vary the volume control, while a jab towards the screen will allow you to answer a call. Now, unfortunately, it is a bit of a fiddly process and it doesn't always respond as it should. So you're much more likely to be activating your infotainment functions through uh, the more usual methods, either by voice control or by twisting the usual iDrive controller down by the gear stick here. Now this rotary dial will be what you'll be using for setting up the M configuration menu, which enables you to dial in your preferences for the DSC stability control, the M X drive four wheel drive system, uh, the engine, the chassis, the steering, the transmission, and even the head up display. An M5 buyer will also frequently want to call on the performance dial display, which shows power and torque generation in real time. Uh, the other screen functions are of course more tuned to business than brand's hatch. Uh, the connected drive menu is particularly informative. That delivers a range of downloadable apps and also access to BMW's suite of online services, which are designed to enhance your journey by sending you up-to-date information while you're at the wheel. So everything from weather and latest news to a rainfall radar and an online search system. A concierge service means that an operator with information for your journey is just a button click away and the included online entertainment uh, package that will give you um, direct access to millions of music tracks. Now it's also optionally possible to connect in Microsoft Exchange 365 to your car so you can uh, control your inbox and sync your calendar. Astonishingly though on a car of this price Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring costs extra and the Android Auto system isn't serviced at all. What else? Um, well, cabin practicality is an area where a little more development might not go amiss. Uh, neither the glove box nor the door bins are especially big, and there's nowhere to put your sunglasses. Plus, this leather-topped twin-lidded storage box between the seats, which is one of the areas you can use to charge up the display key, is, uh, well, it's nothing like as deep as you expect it'll be. We do, though, like this covered cubby ahead of the gear stick, which features a beautifully damped sliding top that glides back to reveal uh, twin cup holders and a compartment for your phone that also incorporates a standard wireless charging mat. Uh, there's a pull-out cubby by the driver's right knee and another nice touch is the standard ambient lighting system which can bathe the cabin in shades of green, yellow, orange, uh, blue, lilac or white. Uh, you can add in an ambient air cabin fragrancing system too. Right, let's take a seat in the rear. Now that's easier to do in this F90 generation design because the doors swing out and wider and the M5 sill branded aperture that you enter through is now usefully tall. It's better inside this time around too, thanks to this Mark 7 model seven millimeters of additional wheelbase length, which frees up extra room for knees and legs. Uh, there is still a fraction less space here than you get in a rival E63 or RS6, but the differences aren't very great, and this BMW betters those two rivals when it comes to ceiling height. Um, further emphasizing the all-round improvement is where the BMW has redesigned this rear bench so that the perch in the middle is no longer quite so uncomfortable. As a result, this car can now be a much more credible adult five-seater, should the need arise for it to be so. Although the middle rear occupant will still be inhibited by this rather high centre transmission tunnel.
If there are only two of you, this center armrest drops down to provide a couple of uh, pop-out cup holders. Other storage options include seat back pockets and large door bins. Uh, there's a smart set of piano black finished ventilation controls above the 12 volt socket and a couple of USB ports here. Uh, these optional colored belts add a bit of M branded atmosphere and the immaculately stitched door cards feature aluminum carbon structure inlays that create an appropriately exclusive feel. Finally, let's raise the aluminium boot lid, which is rather pointlessly electrically operable as standard, and have a look at the luggage area, which for this generation model boasts a small 10 litre increase in size to 530 litres, thanks to the now longer rear overhang. Now that total is only a fraction less than a rival Mercedes E63 can offer, although of course that Merc can give you the option of an estate body style. And that's something that, well from launch anyway, BMW refused to provide with this car. The uh, load sill is lower this time around and the entrance is larger too. Plus you get this lidded compartment and a netted storage area on the left with a further uh, compartment for the owner's manual on the right. A fold out bag hook and a 12 volt socket are both provided. It is a bit surprising that the uh, roof of this area hasn't been properly trimmed though, it's just bare metal. Loading up a couple of large suitcases is easy with little intrusion from the wheel arches or the suspension and there are four securing hooks to tie down loads safely. Uh, there's no opportunity to access further space beneath the floor, which is probably why BMW refuses to offer this car with a spare wheel, only one of those fiddly tyre mobility kits. For those times when more room's needed, you'll want the option of being able to fold down the rear backrest to extend the boot area. That's something that, rather annoyingly, BMW charges you extra for. They do at least fold with a useful 40-20-40 split, so longer items like skis can be pushed through while still retaining the ability to comfortably accommodate a couple of rear seated folk. Pricing's taken quite a leap for this sixth generation model, which now uh, lists at around £90,000 in this standard 600 HP form. Uh, back in 2011, the previous F10 series rear-driven Mark V version launched at around £70,000. But of course, this time around, you get all-wheel drive, more power and more kit. BMW also offers an uprated 625 HP competition version of this car with even sharper handling and extra equipment, but that model will cost you well over £96,000. Pounds. Now, in case you were wondering, there's only this saloon body style on offer. Now, some previous generation M5s have also been available in uh, touring estate guys. BMW says it has looked at that for this F90 series car, but because the rear axle and wheel travel is quite different on a 5 series wagon, quite a lot of redevelopment will be needed. It would be a great car though. Now, few commentators have questioned this car's value proposition, but we're going to by pointing out that the asking price here is almost double what you'd pay for the top model in the conventional 5 Series range, a 540i xDrive M Sport. Now, that variant may only put out 340 HP, but it still has all-wheel drive, and it's less than a second and a half slower from rest to 62. Visually, doesn't look much different, and you can get it as an estate. Such observations will be irrelevant for the majority of buyers who will be expecting the inflated price tag because that's the kind of money that you already have to pay for this M5's arch rival, the Mercedes-AMG E63 4Matic Plus. In saloon guys, the standard 571 HP version of that car costs around £85,000, while in uprated 612 HP E63S guys, it costs just over £94,000. E63 buyers additionally get an estate body style option. Also competing at this price point is the fourth generation RS6 model that Audi's developed to take on this M5. Uh, armed with a four litre twin turbo V8 from the Porsche Panamera Turbo and putting out much the same kind of power of this BMW. Again, you'll be able to specify both saloon and station wagon body styles. So expect Munich to maybe think again about developing that touring variant. 
Now, the other alternatives that you might consider aren't really as directly competitive with this Munich model. Uh, that Porsche Panamera Turbo just mentioned has 50 HP less and costs £25,000 more. A Maserati Quattroporte 3-litre V6 Grand Sport S, which costs about the same as an M5, has much less power and lacks four-wheel drive. As does a Jaguar XJR 575, which costs around £94,000 and is also too big and bulky to compete with an M5. An Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio is more of a BMW M4 competitor. Otherwise, to match the performance on offer here, you'd have to look beyond the saloon market and get yourself either a super SUV or a sports coupe, neither of which will work for an M5 customer. If, having considered all of that, you conclude it is an M5 that you really want, then you're going to need to know uh, just what your money's buying you. Now, with any BMW M car, most of what you're paying for lies beneath the bonnet. And of course, this time around, as well as that 4.4 litre V8, you're getting an M X Drive four wheel drive system and an uprated eight speed M Steptronic auto gearbox. Even so, for £90,000, you'd have a right to expect not to have to tick too many options boxes. So it is reassuring that the uh, equipment level on offer in this standard model is high. All the various drive mode systems that you can hear about elsewhere in this film are standard, as is dynamic damper control, M servotronic steering, and the active M differential, which varies torque between the rear wheels through the corners. And beyond the dynamic stuff, well, there's most of what you'd want. Uh, you get a subtle M body kit, of course, incorporating branded side gills, accentuated side seals, and a neat rear spoiler. And the price includes these gorgeous 20 inch light alloy M double spoke bicolor wheels, uh, chrome twin exhaust, metallic paint, and the standard CFRP carbon fiber reinforced plastic roof, which helps to keep the body weight down. Inside, there are M multifunctional sports seats, a thick M leather steering wheel, uh, anthracite coloured Alcantara headlining, interior fittings with an aluminium carbon structure finish and an M specific digital cockpit instrument binnacle screen. Soft merino leather upholstery, BMW Icon adaptive LED headlights with a high beam assistant, a surround view camera and an ambient interior lighting package with six colour options also make the team sheet. Uh, other features are really only the things that you'd expect from any well-specified full-sized executive segment saloon, auto headlamps and wipers, all-round parking sensors and comfort access keyless entry are naturally included. Uh, inside there's four zone climate control, a rear view camera, powered steering wheel adjustment, heat and electric adjustment for the seats and an auto dipping rear view mirror. Uh, emissions, well, for this kind of money, it is a little bit galling to have to pay extra for a split folding rear seat and for Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring. Uh, you can add that last feature in relatively cheaply though, and unusually and impressively, the Apple CarPlay connection works without any cables. Um, that apart, media connectivity is extremely well taken care of by an impressive BMW professional multimedia system uh, with voice control, which works via a 10.25 inch color touchscreen. Now that is your access point for a whole host of standard elements, uh, 3D navigation, a 16 speaker Harman Kardon DAB audio system, a 20 20 gigabyte hard disk drive, Bluetooth hand-free connectivity, and access to the full suite of BMW connected drive services, including teleservices and real-time traffic information, plus the brand suite of online services. And that'll give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts, and a whole range of BMW apps. In addition, the system will read out text messages to you. And there's more standard media cleverness too. Remote services allows you to control many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. And M5 buyers get a three year subscription to BMW's concierge service, which at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer, well, pretty much any question about your journey as you drive it. Um, also offered to owners is a downloadable BMW connected app, which auto learns frequent journeys and will list them when you're most likely to drive them. 
Another included aspect of the M5 package is a technology pack, which you have to pay extra for on the other 5 Series models. Now, this gives you four further inclusions, a head-up display, a gesture control, which allows you to activate many cabin features with a mere waft of your hand, uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot addition to the infotainment system, which offers a high-speed LTE internet connection for up to 10 devices, and enhanced Bluetooth with wireless charging. That's a feature that recharges your smartphone when you place it in the tray ahead of the gear lever. Now, earlier we mentioned the uprated M5 competition version of this car. So, what does an extra £6,000 buy you here, as well as another 25 horsepower? Well, there's an uprated, noisier M Sport exhaust and suspension lowered by 7mm, which is 10% stiffer. Uh, the 20-inch wheels get bespoke design, the tailpipes are painted in black chrome, and there's high-gloss black detailing for the front kidney grille, the spoiler and the boot badge. Inside, the seat belts and the floor mats get special finishing, and an M competition graphic features in the instrument cluster on startup. OK, let's say you've, you've chosen your M5. What options are available to you in embellishing it? Well, if you've gone for the standard model like this one, we think you're going to really want the thundery M Sport exhaust. Uh, you might also be prepared to pay for the optional M Drivers package. Now, that raises the top speed to 190 miles an hour, although around £2,100 does seem like a huge amount to charge for a software tweak, even if you do get a BMW driver training day as part of the deal. Uh, now, that'll be on a track which is where you'll need the M carbon ceramic brakes that we've got here and they're distinguished by matte gold colored calipers although uh, there's really not much point in shelling out nearly 7,500 pounds for those unless you're a regular track day warrior uh, we would find it much more difficult to resist the audio system upgrade to the top Bowers and Wilkins diamond surround sound system now this has a uh, quantum logic surround technology with five sound settings a 10 channel amplifier, a thumping 1400 watt output and 16 speakers. Now earlier we mentioned that you have to pay extra for split folding rear seats and these can come as part of an optional comfort package uh, which will also get you heating for the steering wheel and rear seats, uh, some protection glass and an achingly cool BMW display key with its built-in colour screen. Now amongst other things this clever key allows remote control of the ventilation system so for example uh, you can warm the car up or cool it down while you're having your breakfast and you'll be able to check uh, whether you've closed the doors, um, when a service is due, and how much fuel you've got left. Um, you will need to have specified a display key if you're going to tape up the uh, remote control parking option that BMW offers, and that will enable you to remotely direct your M5 into a parking space while you stand by and watch. <laughs> Just imagine doing that in the office car park. Um, you could also specify a premium package which offers cooled ventilated front seats with a massaging function, uh, a polished surround finish from the controls and an ambient air system which adds a fragrance to the ventilation uh, also soft closed doors which only need to be lightly shut and which will then complete the latching process themselves automatically um, now we should point out that uh, many of the features in the various packs we just mentioned can be ordered as individual extras if you want to take more of an a la carte approach to specifying your car Beyond audio upgrades, there are various extra media connectivity options you can add to. Now, earlier we mentioned you have to pay extra for Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring. And another low-cost box that you'll probably want to tick is the one for the online entertainment package. Now, that will give you a direct access to millions of music tracks from either Deezer or Napster without the need for a mobile phone or an MP3 device in the car. Now, as part of this, you can access your own music via cloud-based services. So, for example, uh, you could create a playlist at home and then have it available to stream in your car. Business buyers will also want to consider optional Microsoft Office Exchange 365 connectivity. Now that, in car, will allow them to control emails in their inbox and sync their online calendar. And finally, if you really want to push the boat out, uh, other options include a TV tuner and a rear seat entertainment experience package, which provides backseat occupants with a couple of 10.2-inch screens which work with a DVD Blu-ray player and provide connections for MP3 players, USB USB devices, uh, games, consoles, and wireless headphones. 
Now, away from media connectivity, there's a range of other individual nice-to-have items that you could add. Uh, an electric glass sunroof, for example, although that means substituting the carbon fibre roof for the usual heavier aluminium panel. Uh, in addition, you can add individual rear seat reading lights. Um, driving stuff includes adaptive cruise control. Plus, there's a night vision system, which is specifically able to pick out errant pedestrians after dark, although uh, the standard LED headlamps are so good that we doubt you'll ever need that. As for practical touches, well, you can add in sun blind for the rear screen and there's an optional through loading ski bag. Uh, you might also want the leather case that BMW can provide to protect that display key. If you're going to be carrying lots of equipment with you, then you might need the optional fully electric retractable tow bar and possibly also the BMW roof system with its rails for carrying roof boxes and attachments for skis, snowboards and cycles. Finally, we would also want to add the optional BMW track star tracking system on a car of this value. So on to aesthetics. Now we've stuck with one of the standard exterior metallic colours here, Donington Grey, but many buyers are going to want to pay more for one of the extra cost BMW individual paint shades. Um, if you don't like the bicolour M double spoke wheels, then you can swap them out for a set of Mina or black ones. And we would also be tempted by the idea of an M carbon engine cover. Uh, now you'll want to get the look of the interior right too, perhaps by varying the cabin trim. Now there's an aluminium carbon structure with dark chrome highlight package and you can add inlays in piano black or in fine wood, uh, the latter in either light brown or plum brown shades, uh, the last one with pearl chrome highlights. As for upholstery, uh, you can add in a bespoke BMW individual finish for the merino leather upholstery and you can have special M seat belts too. On to safety. Now you'll be expecting this car to be state of the art in this regard as BMW claims it is. Uh, M5 buyers get as standard the camera driven features of the driving assistant pack which is extra on the more ordinary 5 series models. Now this includes six state of the art features. Uh, perhaps the most important of these is what BMW calls approach control warning. Now basically this is one of those autonomous braking systems that scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential accident hazards hazards, either vehicles or people. If one's detected, you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Um, as for the other five driving assistant pack features, well, there's lane departure warning, and that's there to help to keep you in lane on the highway. A lane change warning feature, which detects vehicles in your blind spot if you're um, just about to pull out to overtake. A speed limit information setup. Now that pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays them for you on the dash. And there's a crossing traffic warning feature. Now that uses radar sensors to check for approaching traffic when you're backing out of a perpendicular parking space. Uh, also very useful is the prevention of rear collision feature, which helps you to avoid rear end impacts by automatically flashing the hazard lights at vehicles which are following your M5 too closely, while at the same time preparing the car for an impact should the worst happen. Now we'll also cover off the more expected safety stuff that every 5 Series has these days. There's tyre pressure monitoring and twin front and side airbags, plus active head restraints that prevent whiplash. In addition, you get head and curtain airbags for both front and rear seats, and of course, Isofix child seat fastenings. Now so that hopefully you'll never have to use any of this stuff, there's usual electronic assistance for traction, stability and braking, including hill start assist, brake drying and brake fade compensation. Um, in addition, the infotainment system's standard suite of BMW connected drive features includes BMW Emergency Call, which will alert the emergency services should you have an accident and direct them to your exact GPS location. Uh, if you're prepared to spend more on safety kit, your dealer will offer you various options. Uh, there's an extra cost dynamic safety system which instantly senses if an accident situation is imminent and if so, it will automatically pre-tension the seat belts, close the windows and the sunroof if it's fitted and position the driver's seat in the optimum safety position. It'll also break the car after any impact to try to ensure that you don't go on and hit something else. 
If you want to go even further, a pricier Driving Assistant Plus pack gives you a portfolio of eight additional items. Uh, one we haven't often seen before is the Lane Change Assistant, which works between 43 and 83 miles an hour, um, which will take over the steering and change lanes for you with just a stab on the indicator stalk. Two other Driving Assistant Plus pack features that we really like include the Evasion Aid, which supports the necessary evasive steering action that you'd have to take if an obstacle were to suddenly appear in your path, and crossing traffic warning front. And that's a system that helps you to spot traffic as you edge out of junctions. Finally, the pack includes two clever features which use the navigation system. Crossroad warning flags up dangers at stop signs and cross road locations. And wrong way warning alerts you if you're going the wrong way down a one way street. BMW is quick to tell us that the curb weight of this 6th generation F90 series M5 has dropped by 15 kilos over the previous model, but not so keen to remind us that this car still weighs the best part of two tonnes, and that's despite its cluster architecture underpinnings and its composite carbon fibre style roof. Still delivering four-wheel drive and a lot more equipment this time around without any really significant drop in fuel economy or CO2 returns has to be seen as something of a result. Let's get to the figures, although of course they're pretty irrelevant because if you were regularly to replicate them, we'd have to wonder why you bothered buying an M5 in the first place. It is interesting though to see uh, just how this car fares in comparison to the figures that you get with its closest competitor, the Mercedes AMG E63, which for reference are 26.2 mpg on the combined cycle and 245 grams per kilometre of CO2. Check out this BMW stats and you'll find that this F90 series M5 slightly shades its arch rival. We're talking 26.9 mpg on the combined cycle. It was 28.5 mpg with the previous F10 series V8 model. And the CO2 reading is 241 grams per kilometer, previously 232 grams per kilometer. For the uprated competition version of this car, the readings are 26.9 mpg and 243 grams per kilometer. Now, if you want to feel good about these readings, it might be better instead to reference the fact that the old 2005 era E60 fourth generation M5 was up to 30% dirtier and thirstier than this current model. That's despite putting out 100 horsepower less and having only two driven wheels. Its screaming, normally aspirated V10 sounded much better though. The problem with that thirsty old V10 was that on a cross-continental trip, you typically have to stop for fuel every 250 miles or so, which often turns a potentially very rapid journey into a somewhat slower one. This F90 series model performs much better in that regard, even though, extremely annoyingly, the fuel tank capacity has dropped from 80 to 68 litres this time around. Nevertheless, uh, with restrained long distance highway driving and use of the engine's efficiency mode, uh, you could still get up to 400 miles of range. Of course, the driver must play his or her part. In the My Vehicle Technology in Action part of the iDrive screen, you'll be able to monitor any token efforts you've made towards frugality via an efficient dynamic screen that graphically shows the economy figures that you've achieved. Now, talking of efficient dynamics, uh, BMW has, as usual, extensively relied on this part of its technology portfolio to keep running costs in check. There's an engine auto start-stop system, as you'd expect, and at highway speeds, uh, the crew cruise control can decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and consequently save fuel. Optimised aerodynamics obviously makes a big difference too. BMW has developed what it calls air breathers and air curtains. Uh, these devices located respectively behind and ahead of the front wheel arches. Uh, their purpose is to reduce turbulence and therefore drag in the area around the front wheels. Uh, in addition, like every 5 Series model, this one has an active Airstream kidney grille at the front end with slats which stay closed when initially you first move off, so uh, helping the engine to to warm up to operating temperature as quickly as possible. And once that's achieved, uh, then the slats open to aid cooling, but they're able to close again at higher speeds to improve the car's slippery shape. 
What else might you need to know? Uh, well, routine maintenance is dictated by condition-based servicing, which monitors oil level and engine wear, taking into account how long it's been and how far the car has traveled since its previous garage visit. Now, like all M cars, this one needs a first running in service at uh, 1,200 miles, and you can check all of this using menus in the iDrive center dash display, and the car will give you four weeks notice of when a checkup's needed, so you'll have plenty of time to book that. Uh, to help to plan ahead for the cost of regular work, um, at the point of purchase, you'll be offered a BMW service inclusive package, which lasts for three years and 36,000 miles. Now with this, after a one-off payment, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, including items such as oil, spark plugs and filters. Onto the warranty package, BMW offers a warranty that lasts for three years, no matter how many miles you complete. Uh, you can insure your car through BMW too, although as most M5s will be funded with company money through a lease deal, the brokerage fees are likely to be bundled into that. If you're the one paying the premium though, the M5 predictably sits in a top of the shop group 50. Residual values, well they won't match the kinds of returns you get on a volume 5 series model, for reference about 42% after 3 years and 60,000 miles, but they should be a match for that rival Mercedes AMG E63. And finally, remember that it'll be fearsomely expensive to replace the bespoke Pirelli P0 performance tyres, so do bear that in mind before you go track day showboating. According to BMW, each M5 generation has brought us greater levels of technological innovation. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Another would be to point out that only the first E28 generation version had a fully motorsport tuned engine, and that since then we've lost the purity of straight six engine wear, the instancy and screaming character of normally aspirated power, and what was once the founding tenet of BMW design, rear wheel drive engineering. At the same time though, much has certainly been gained, as we've discovered in this test. With this F90 series model, uh, the development team has proved that an all-wheel drive M5 can still retain a rear-driven, enthusiast-orientated character. And they've delivered a super saloon that's as happy collecting your dry cleaning as it is on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. If you are on a circuit, it's good to know that you don't have to have all-wheel traction unless you really want it. But unless you're an expert, or your intent on showing off, then we're guessing that you'll really value the extra tractional help in extremis. And on a wet, icy morning, it'll give you the small but crucial extra dose of confidence which will allow you to enjoy this car even more. To do that, you'll have to master the initially baffling range of driving modes on offer. They introduce a level of complexity to this BMW that some have moaned about. We don't really see why. Uh, as an owner, you'd sort out your preferences at the beginning, load them into the two steering wheel preset buttons, and then just get on with enjoying the car. It is a bit more valid to complain about the slightly muted engine soundtrack. Well, at least if your point of comparison is the wild V8 of this car's Mercedes-AMG E63 arch rival, but you can improve things with the optional M Sport exhaust, and in compensation, this M5 is a little more agile than that Stuttgart Super Saloon. It would, in fact, be our fast four door of choice if money were no object, and we suspect it'd probably be yours too. We wish it wasn't so expensive, but it is more engaging than its predecessor and more real world usable too. In short, this car is more than ever everything an M5 should be.